Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we'll explore how to use the find and find all functions inside Beautiful Soup to extract data from HTML content. Here we have some sample HTML content that I've written out and we'll be practicing on this throughout this tutorial. But rest assured, the concepts that I discuss can be used on any kind of HTML content. All right, so let's begin. So our goal is to extract meaningful data from this HTML content. Let's begin by doing something simple. Let's say we want to extract the title of this HTML content. Each website typically has one title. Each HTML page has one title. So let's try and extract this HTML tag. Okay, it's called title. Now I'm going to print this out. Then we're going to see what we get. Okay, this is the find function. And the parameter that it takes is the tag, the HTML tag that you want to locate. Now we hit enter and it prints out the entire HTML tag, the entire HTML element along with the text inside it. But this isn't very useful information, right? We can't really do much with this. What we really wanted was this. We wanted the text inside the title tag, okay? These are the tags, the HTML tags. This is the text inside it. Now, if you want the text, what we're going to do is use the get text function, okay? And this gives us the, uh, the text, okay? Let me just bring this up a bit, all right? Now, what if, for example, we wanted to find these paragraph tags? How would we do so? Well, we're going to replace this with P. P is the paragraph tag, okay, in HTML. Now I'm going to hit enter, but this only prints out one paragraph. Why is that? Well, that is because the find function only returns the first element that it finds, the first match, basically. So how do we get all of these? How to get all of the paragraph tags? Well, what we're going to do is find all, okay? This is going to return a list. We can't just call the get text function like that anymore. What we need to do is, uh, let me just print this out like this first, okay? Then I'll show you how to extract the text, okay? If I print this out, it gives us this list, okay? This list of paragraph tags, okay? There are basically two versions, find and find all. Find returns the first match, find all returns all of the matches. So what we're going to do is say p tags or p elements is equal to soup.findAll. Then we're going to do for p in p elements p dot get text and then we'll just print this out. All right. Now I'll hit enter. And there we go. We can see these three paragraphs all of their text has been printed out here. Let me just clear this now. All right, so what else should we do? Um, I made a checklist over here. We've covered the simple find, we've covered find all. Now we're going to cover how to locate by class. What exactly is a class though? Well, in HTML, classes are used to kind of categorize different elements, like a paragraph tag with large text may have a class of large. And then a paragraph tag with small text may have a class of small and so on, so on. Then these classes are used to identify these paragraph tags uniquely. And then we apply operations on them. Like in CSS, if you're familiar with that, CSS is then used to apply styles like different colors, different font sizes, depending on the class of the HTML element. It's pretty complex. We won't go into that. But from a scraping perspective, we're gonna use classes to uh, identify which one we want to extract. We may have a hundred paragraph tags inside a page, but there may only be a certain few that we want. And those are usually uniquely identified by a class, all right? For example, we have three paragraph tags over here. And let's say we only want to extract the paragraph tags which have the class of first, okay? So we want these two. 
these two paragraph tags, the first and the third one. So what we're going to do is class underscore, okay, and then first. Now let's print this out. And as we can see, this only prints out this one and this one. And what do they have in common? They both have the class of first. If I change this to second, it's only going to give me this, the one which had the class of, of second. Let's assume that there was a third one, all right, called third paragraph, all right, and it has a class of third, okay. And let's assume we wanted to get the ones with either first or second. How do we do this? We could call this function twice, uh, one for second, one for first, but that's not efficient. I mean, why do that when we have built-in functionality, right? So what we're going to do is define a list over here, okay? And then we're going to pass in all the classes that we want to match with, okay? And this returns these three. Okay, and ignores this one. Another common scenario that can occur is when one HTML element has two classes. So for example, this one may have the classes first and second separated by a space. Okay, so if I now execute this code, it's going to give me these three, these three. But what if I only want the class with both first and second? not either of them i want it i want only those paragraph tags which have both cl classes so what we're going to do is replace this we won't use a list we're going to use the first space second format okay we're going to write the first class then leave a space then the, the second class okay this is all one string now if i execute this we only get this one okay the one that had both classes all right, and what's next? All right, find by attribute. Now, class is an attribute, okay? This is an attribute. There are multiple types of attributes in, uh, you know, in HTML, and we've already done quite a bit on paragraph tags. So let's do it on this, this A tag. So let's give it an ID, all right? An ID of one, okay? and I'm not sure whether this should be a string or not, but let's just go ahead and make it one. All right, so this is the ID and let's just remove those. All right, now how do we find this? If I do something like this, okay, then it returns all of the A tags, this one and this one, but I want to identify them by ID. And for the sake of it, let's just give this one the ID of two. Okay. Now, if I want to get the a, a tag uh, with the ID of one, I'm going to do ATTRs attributes. Okay. Then over here, I'll say ID. Okay. It's basically a dictionary of key value pairs. The key is the attribute and the value is the value of the ID that you want to search for. In this case, it's one. So if I execute this, it's going to give us the first one. Okay this one right here. Let's just clear this is getting cluttered again. Let's change this to two and it's going to return the second one, Wikipedia. Okay, so that's how we can find it by attribute. I'm just letting you know this beforehand that there are many different types of attributes. Classes and ID are two of the most common, but there are others. And actually class is also an attribute. So you can also do this. Uh, let's change this to P and then first okay so it gives us this one and this one okay and i think href also counts as an attribute so let's do this okay see uh my website quoteslegacy.com let's search for the a tags with this href and yep we get this one okay which says website all right, so this is how we can search by attributes in beautiful soup using the find function. So lastly, we have find by text. Okay, so this is kind of like in reverse. Up till now, we've been finding these elements and then extracting the text from them. Uh, this is gonna be the reverse. 
where we are going to remove all of this. We aren't going to search by HTML tag. We're going to search by text. So over here, I'll say text is equal to website. And then uh, I should have printed this out, P elements, then hit enter, and it prints out website over here. See, it basically returned this, okay? A better way of doing this, though, which is a new feature in Beautiful Soup 4, uh, which is the main version right now, is to use this string, okay, and then hit enter. And this is better, in my opinion, because it returns the actual element, all right? And we can just do it, do this with find as well. Everything that I discussed works on find and find all, all right? There's no difference, you know, other than the fact that one of them returns multiple and one of them returns only one okay so if i hit enter now this returns uh the html tag all right and then we can perform operations on this like you know get text all right and this gives us website but we already knew that right because we were searching by text uh string is equal to website is the same thing string the string parameter is kind of like the same thing as you know as a uh, text so what else should we look at? Well, we should look at how we can chain together several things. Like we, for example, we want to locate the A tags. Like let's assume that we don't have these IDs. Okay, we don't have the ID. And this is quite common. Not every website is gonna be so well structured and everything's gonna be very cut and clear for you. Sometimes you're gonna have to resort to other alternate techniques to get what you want. So we have these two A tags and we want this one. So what we can do instead is locate this div. Okay. Like we don't have any way of differentiating between the two of these, right? Like let's assume we don't. Okay. We could differentiate by HRF, but again, let's assume that we don't know what the HRF is beforehand. So we need some other way of classifying them. So what we can do is use this div. That's the very next thing you should do. If you can't figure out something, to uniquely identify that element within the element, then look at the parent element. Okay, so look at this div. So what we're going to do, for example, is find this div, which has a class of example one. And then what we can do, a cool thing that we can do when we use find, we can chain another request right here. And then say within this div, find all, a tags okay and, and uh, that, that's enough pretty much i think and let's hit enter uh wait print p elements there we go cool okay so uh, let me just clear this is getting cluttered again print there we go see we got we got this right here and with this, I'm going to end the video. I think we've gone on quite long already, and I think we've covered pretty much everything, or at least the vast majority of uh, situations. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys found it useful. If you want to see more interesting content like this, do subscribe to the channel. We have other videos on Beautiful Soup coming out, other very important videos, alternate techniques. Find is not the only way you can extract data. Okay, there are others which are, in some, in some cases, better. All right, so yeah, hope to see you guys in a future video of mine. Later.